They say, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. And most, if not all of us, have woken up this morning with our Christmas plans in tatters. Across the UK, a five-day window for family gatherings has been reduced to a single day with no overnight stops. In the southeast of England, and that's where we're broadcasting to you from today, even Christmas Day can only be spent with those who live under your own roof. In recent days, the voice of authority had encouraged us to plan for a relaxed Christmas. But now, in the light of new information, that same authority says no. And something very similar happened to King David in ancient Israel. He wanted to build a temple to house the nation's holiest treasure, the Ark of the Covenant. And even the voice of authority, the prophet Nathan, said, yes, by all means, go ahead. But there was a problem. Nathan hadn't yet taken the time to listen to God. When he did, he'd hear a different message. And the next day, Nathan would have to go back to the king with God's message. Change your plans. No, you're not going to have the big celebration you imagine when you've built the temple. You're not doing it. But that wasn't the only part of God's message. God also sent good tidings, tidings of a secure future. In the next generation, the security would come through David's son Solomon building the first temple. And much later, it would come through Jesus Christ of the line of David, who is true God and true man, be king of the universe forever. So what did King David do next? It's not in the portion of the reading we've just heard, but if you look to the rest of that chapter in the second book of Samuel, you do find what King David did. He worshipped God. He accepted that he couldn't build the temple without complaining. He thanked God for both his past and his future victories, and he asked God to make good this promise of a kingly line that would endure forever. And we are invited to respond in the same way. Despite our changed plans, will we choose to spend this Christmas praising God? Now, glory to God is a common refrain in our Christmas worship. I mean, how many carols are there that have a big extended Gloria? Gloria, or something like that in there. You can't do Christmas without glory and glorious. We don't actually pray the mass prayer, glory to God in the highest, for the four Sundays before Christmas. It gets rested, so it comes back to prominence, renewed and refreshed on Christmas night. But do we stop to ask ourselves, what is glory? A few years ago, I was chaplain to a parish with a community of deaf people, and I learned to celebrate Mass using British Sign Language. And I discovered there was not one, but two signs for glory. When we praise God, the glory goes upwards. But when God glorifies us, the sparkle comes down and rests upon us. Jesus said that God would glorify him on the cross and we can reveal God's glory in the way we receive unwelcome news. The angel Gabriel came to a young woman called Mary with an astonishing message. Mary herself was to become the Ark of the Covenant, a human container for the presence of God. And we hear her respond in awe and humility, how can this be? But let God's will be done. And in giving her yes, her fiat, Mary glorified God. In the long term, that glory came through the miracles of her son and his triumph over death. But in the short term, she showed God's glory and the way she accepted suffering through taking God's plan into her life. Being doubted by her, her fiancé, Joseph. Being suspected of adultery by the community around her. And going into exile in Egypt. And each time, her beautiful heart said, This is God's plan. Let it be. Glory to God.
We might not feel like glorifying God when our plans are in ruins. But let's take our lead from King David and the Blessed Mother. For some of us, it might mean this year we'll have to spend Christmas alone. In fact, I'm offering this Mass for everyone who will need to spend Christmas on their own this year. But we can still connect with God and with others. It might mean for the first time ever in our lives we can plan Christmas Day around God rather than human visitors. That might be connecting to an act of worship on broadcast television or on the internet. It might be about taking time to pray on our own. But also connecting with other people. If the only way we can connect this year is through technology, we might ask whose need to connect is greatest rather than who lives within traveling distance. We can make different decisions this year, but we can make good decisions. So in all that you do, choose to give glory to God. And there again, it might be that we'll spend Christmas this year under the same roof as other people we weren't expecting to share Christmas with. And if that's you, today you can make a choice. In the spirit of Christmas goodwill, choose today to make a good Christmas with your new companions. Recognize that each person will hold dear in their hearts their own hopes and their own family traditions about what makes a good Christmas, about what could or should happen on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. So take time to listen to what each person expects and then create a unique Christmas for your household this year. It won't be like any other Christmas, past or future, but it can be a good Christmas. If you take that time to listen to the needs of each person and you don't insist things have to be the way they've been for you before, you'll give glory to God. And if in that planning you give space for prayer and for celebrating Jesus on Christmas Day, then the glory will be even greater. Through our baptism, each one of us is a temple of the Lord, a vessel meant to be filled with God's glory, meant to show God's power working through us. So whenever our human plans are challenged by the circumstances around us, we can say two things without doubt. God has permitted this, and God will bring good out of it. We reveal God's glory humble enough to say with Mary, let it be done to me. So take a deep breath sacrifice the Christmas you've been planning because it's not going to happen that way. In fact, surrender completely. Give your plans as a gift to God. Give them as a gift complete with the receipt so God can take them back and exchange them. And Once you've let go, relax. If you want God to make you laugh, follow his plans and in the morning you will see his glory. Zion Community, we want to wish you a blessed and happy Christmas.